Good day students, this is Dr. Raisa Misi Narciso and I am your subject teacher for the subject CBM 1 to 1 entitled Strategic Management. Again, we will be using the book of Barry J. Witcher for the discussion. At this point, I already assume that you have read in advance the self-instructional manual SIM as well as the ebook too. And as stated in the syllabus, the coverage for first examination will be discussed relating to Big Picture A with three unit learning outcome, so A, B, and C. And at this point, we will be discussing the first unit learning outcome which tackles about strategic management in general. So in this portion, we will be familiarizing the meta language for this unit. So first, we have strategic management. So this refers to the organization's management of its overall long-term purpose. So strategic management helps a decision maker to get equipped with management tools or anticipating changes and directing the organizational activities along, along the right path. So practice of strategic management reduces the risk of operation by helping the enterprise to innovate in time and take an early action. The second one is the strategic planning. So this is the process of planning sequencing activities in terms of responsibilities and resources within a given time frame to be able to progress in organization's purpose over time. In short, it determines where an organization is going over the next year or more, how it's going to get there and how it will know if it got there or not. And the third one is strategic change. So strategic change means a step and transformational change that moves an organization to a new and sustainable competitive position and is likely to require changes in existing strategy. The main idea behind strategic change is moving a company away from its present state towards some desired future state to increase its competitive advantage. Then we also have continuous improvement which refers to an organizational learning that sustains and incrementally improves productivity and customer value in daily management, subject to the requirements of an organization strategy. So this is something to do with total quality management actually. And lastly is the competitive strategy. So this is a business level strategy designed to sustain a competitive advantage over rivals and potential rivals. This aims to beat competition no matter what industry you are in. So shown in this slide is figure one, which contains the components of strategic management. So as seen, the first component is purpose, which is the basic reason for an organization's long-term existence. And it is the starting point for understanding an organization in its entirety. Purpose is about the mission of the company, why it exists. So this is very important as it gives direction as to the movement of the company in the future plans. So, for example, the University of Mindanao's mission or purpose of existence is to provide a dynamic and supportive academic environment through the highest standard of instruction, research, and extension in a non-sectarian institution committed to democratizing access to education. So that is why it is evident that the institution's programs are uh, directed on its mission, like investing in research activities or proposals. So actually, there are a lot of students no, nga nag-join ng mga research presentations international and then UM funded siya and just like for example I have um, escorted three students at uh, to Palawan last 2019 for the research proposal it is a national research congress actually so continuing accreditation and ISO certification and intensify linkages to different partner industries and international schools such as engaging to exchange programs so right now although it is pandemic it is still um, the University of Mindanao is still continuing to have an online international exchange program and in the human resource management and other na mga programs such as marketing finance and other department nag join din tayo ngayon para sa online exchange program so in the hr program we have miss angeli autumn in which she is the participant sent for that specific na uh, course na kanilang i-take up which is good governance and corporate social responsibility 
So the second component is the situation analysis which tackles about the external and internal environment wherein you have to scan the organizational environment first. As according to Sun Chu, if you are familiar with him in his book The Art of War, part of the strategy in winning all battles is to know yourself and to know your enemy. But, you, but if you only know yourself but don't know your enemy, you can either win or lose the battle. Worst case is, if you don't know both yourself and your enemy, you will lose all of your battle in the end. So in this part, a situation analysis shall be conducted and the most common tool used in environmental scanning is conducting a SWOT analysis. And lastly, it is also a must to identify strategic objectives in order to identify the main goal of your strategic planning. So this topic will be discussed in detail in the succeeding chapters. Okay, so the third component is the strategy formulation. After conducting a SWOT analysis, you are now ready to formulate a strategy using SWOT matrix. So the identified strength, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats shall be the basis on formulating a strategy since one must utilize the existing data about the internal and external environment. So this is also important in order not to be too ideal with a strategy set. No? So the last component is implementation. Uh, in the end, the effectiveness of an organization's strategic management depends on the nature and commitment of top management. So it's strategic le leadership also. Thus, for all of it to be realized, it is a must that top management should have full support and hands-on regarding st the strategic planning process in order to understand the details and purpose of the plan. The implementation part is the hardest to realize because most organizations are just good in planning and don't have the guts in implementing it. So that's the reality. And in figure 1.2, Presented here, ayun, meron pa pala. In the end, the effectiveness of an organization's strategic management depends on the nature of and commitment of top management and its strategic leadership. Okay, so in figure 1.2, presented here is the time spent on organizational activities. So it is evident that strategic management uses top-down approach since the planning starts in the top level. So their role is very vital since they are responsible in the overall strategic direction of a company. So their decisions and plan affect the whole company in general. That is also some are wondering why do those executives receive high salary or compensation while they are just sitting in their office and not doing hard labor as compared to those who are working under the heat of the sun. So top executives actually are not into technical skills but in conceptual skills which is the crucial skill that an executive should have. In fact, in reality, using one's mind extensively is not relaxing at all. Worst case is, it can result to insanity, stress, suicidal attempts, and more. Uh, and more. While challenges in physical labor, labor can be addressed by just pain relievers or a one whole day of rest. No? So, in opposite, daily management is a bottom-up approach since the technical work are given to middle and lower management. So, they have few contributions on strategic management formulations, but their roles are crucial since they are the one who actualize the plan set by the top management. They are also the one who gives the plan a sense of practicality. There are some instances kasi guys that the top management's thinking would be too ideal or impractical and the middle and lower management can help them in double checking the practicality of the plan. No? So, great idea often comes from those who are in the bottom. Okay, so next slide, we have strategic planning. Strategic planning is equated with the acronym POST or the Purpose, Objective, Strategy, and Tactics. So at its most complex, strategic planning is known as long-range planning, which examines trends to forecast future events, sometimes far into the future. But there is a critic, and the most well-known critic of strategic planning is Henry Mintzberg, 1994, who argued that um, strategic plans are changed during their implementation as local strategy emerges, in which he has a point about this. That is why to address such scenario, 
from the traditional na 10 year long term strategic plan it was reduced to 5 year strat plan na lang so although it is still subject to changes but as compared to 10 year plan the influence of external factors does not affect the achievement of the plan unless they are uh, there are mga rare episodes that have a huge impact example if there is a war there is terrorism there is pandemic just like what we are in right now no and etc so strategic planning is now understood to be a part of strategic management actually okay so we also have here the here the baldridge excellence framework that defines good practices in terms of a set of management principles so number one all tasks must be planned properly number two Plans must be implemented so that people are working to these plans. Number three, work uh, must be monitored and progress must be reviewed. And number four, necessary action must be taken to account for any deviation from the plan. So actually, these first four principles correspond to the order of the Deming cycle, which is the plan, do, check, and act, which will be discussed in detail in the succeeding ch chapters. So while the other two, the fifth management principle is organizations must have structures and management systems to ensure the above work in practice. And lastly is that everybody must be involved in these structures and systems. So the other two cover the necessary provisions of organizational support and a favorable corporate culture. In continuation, Baldridge specifies that a strategic plan should have one, a defined strategy. Number two, action plans derived from this strategy and awareness and recognition of the differences between short and longer term plans. An approach for developing strategy based on an organization's external environment and internal strategic resources. An approach for implementing action plans that considers an organization's key processes and performance measures, and lastly, an approach for monitoring and evaluating organization's performance in relation to the strategic plan. So while Baldridge does not specify a best way for strategic planning, the, le the least emphasize the parts that strategic management should have. So let us now tackle about the term strategic change, which means a transformational change which aims to move an organization to a new position of performance. So actually, change happens continually within the organization and their market. Strategic development um, inevitably results in some change, which needs careful management. Change is either planned or unplanned. In business environment, companies have to undergo different kinds of changes. These changes occur due to internal issues of company or advancement of technology. So currently, companies obtain benefit from strategic change. So... They must adjust themselves with the new condition if they want to have profits. So the challenge for managers in current business climate is learning to manage change successfully. Manage should have the required qualities to implement change successfully. And to stay competitive in the long term, man, uh, businesses are required to assume compound changes with increasing speed, effectiveness, and success. So, making substantial strategic change should normally be episodic. So, it typically happens when threats and opportunities in the external and sometimes in the internal environment call for urgent radical changes to an organization's existing strategy and business model. So, just like that, uh, just like what happened right now that it is a pandemic, this rare episode brought large impact to strategic planning thus enforcing changes in the plan strategy so next is the what we call continuous improvement which refers to change that is continuous and incremental based on making improvements so by applying total quality management in the company uh, it is imperative to say that it is a race with no end so it does not mean no that when the current desired state was achieved you will also stop changing now so to ensure that an organization continues to be uh, fit, for, uh, fit for purpose, a number of key performance indicators along with the strategy, strategies and targets to achieve them are laid out, typically in the form of business plan. So this KPI 
is a way of verifying the desired indicator was achieved or not. So example, if your KPI is job satisfaction, then the means of measuring job satisfaction is based on the survey rating of the employees working inside a company, which will then be subjected, uh, subjected to intervention or enhancement program. And also we have this competitive strategy that gives an organization an advantage for earning above average profits within its industry by creating value that is unique compared with that offered by its rivals. So the competitive strategy consists of the business approaches and initiatives undertaken by a company to attract customers and to deliver superior value to them through fulfilling their expectations as well as to strengthen its market position. So in short, the objective of competitive strategy is to win the, the customer's hearts through satisfying their needs and finally to attain competitive advantage as well as outcompete the competitors or the what we call rival companies. Okay, so now let's have this. What is strategy? The term strategy and strategic management are used interchangeably across teaching courses and textbooks. No, In fact, they are quite different things. The strategy concept is central to strategic management, but like strategic planning, it is only a part of strategic management. So strategy is an approach for directing an organization's operation to ensure its direction and purpose are sustained over time. So in thinking about strategy, there are two perspectives that are considered individually but which need to come together, especially for effective competitive strategy. One starts with external market positioning, the other is internal strategic resources. So inside-out perspectives center on a uh, organization's internal environment and a resource-based view of strategy, which will also be discussed in the succeeding chapters. So the aim is to manage an internal fit of strategic resources to create and sustain a unique competitive difference. So big picture strategists are perhaps more likely to take an outside-in view of strategy, so baliktad naman, compared with hands-on strategists who may be inclined to start with inside-out thinking. So that's it for the discussion of the big picture A in the unit learning outcome A. So if you have any questions, so do not hesitate to ask me during our video conferencing. So thank you and God bless.